So we touched on this a bit in week one, but in, in Mongo, there's this concept of shards, which are partitions, if you will. So if you think of set partitioning, you know, that's where each one has different data. And that's exactly the case with sharding. So we can have shard zero, shard one, and each one will have different documents. So a given BSON document will live on one and only one shard at a given point in time. Now it's possible for documents to move for rebalancing purposes, but at a given point in time, the document lives on one shard. Now within a shard, we can have replication though. So we could have replicas interest shard that have the same document. So in a replica set, different members have the same documents. With sharding, different shards have different documents. So we would mainly use replication here for high availability and data safety and disaster recovery. We use sharding for scale out. Okay, so how do we distribute data across these different shards? And in Mongo, we're doing a distribution based on a shard key in a given collection. We'll pick a shard key and documents, the same shard key will be on the same shard and shard keys will actually be will keep ranges of shard keys. So there'll be sort of a key low to key high, which lives on a certain shard, like say shard two, um, that key range. So documents in, this, in the same collection, which share the same shard key will all, will all be on the same shard. In addition, documents whose shard key is close to the other shard key um, in sort order, will tend to be on the same shard too. And that is because Mongo's sharding does what we refer to as range-based partitioning. So that's a little bit like the way Google Bigtable works and its partitioning and uh, um, the products with their, which are um, uh, Bigtable inspired and often work that way. So basically this means that a given range of a given key range will live on a particular shard. So for example, let's say we were had documents and they have various fields, but name is our shard key and we shard on that. So you declare your shard key then what we would have is name low, name high, shard. So for example, Jane to Joe belongs on, let's say, shard two. And then that's a range. And then Joe to Kyle is on shard zero. Kyle to Matt, shard one, and so forth. So what we get is these ranges and they map to a particular shard and that is our metadata. So this is our metadata which really tells us the location of documents in the cluster. So another way to look at it would be kind of use more math like notation. You could do something like this. This range maps to shard 2 and then this range maps to shard 0. And this is in the context of a given collection. All right, so we can have different shard keys for different collections. So, so this is all, this discussion is all within the context of the particular collection which we have sharded. So you might ask why range-based? You know, why divide it up this way instead of just sort of hashing these things around into some buckets or something? And the reason is that so we can do queries that involve ranges with some efficiency, right? So if you ask for all the users whose names started with J-O, we could then be smart about that and only send the query to the shards which have data for those shard keys. So imagine a query like db. Users whose name starts with J-O, we could also use greater than and less than, right? We could say greater than or equal to, uh, in other words, greater than or equal in Mongo syntax, J in the next character, B, right? That'll give us that as same thing as here. So regardless, if, if, if the system sees this, it could then say, well, there's only a couple key ranges for this collection, users. See, this is in the context of the users collection, this metadata. So I have a key range here and a key range here. Those are the only ones which involve JO at the beginning. So then these are the only shards I need to contact for this query. 
Um, so in this situation, the system would only do work on the two relevant shards, even if there were, say, 100 shards. We would only be talking to those two, so that would be good. So a lot of queries you'll find will go to only a single shard per query. Here's one, it hits two, but that's good. That's a lot better than 100, right? If we hit all of them, which would happen if you do a query that doesn't involve the shard key, for example, that would then be called a scatter-gather query or a scatter-gather operation. The other nice thing is we could take this query and we could then add extra criteria. So now we have a more complex query, but because the shard key name was involved in the query, we know where to send it. So we would still send the query only to those two shards. But they'll get this entire query, and then they're going to do the relevant processing of all these different sub sub pieces of the expression um, themselves. So one reason we have the range-based partitioning is so we could do a query on a range efficiently. Another reason is for sorting. Uh, sometimes with sorting, it can be quite useful.